Hello everybody and welcome back. We're looking now at question 15 on the grade 8 Gauss from 2007. Sally picks four consecutive positive integers. She divides each integer she divides each integer by 4 and then adds the remainders together. The sum of the remainders is. Mm. Okay. So, we, we need to figure out the sum of the remainders. Now, you might be saying to yourself, gee, I don't know what four consecutive positive integers Sally picked. The question is vague. Did she pick 1, 2, 3, 4? Did she pick, you know, 101, 102, 103, 104? Did she pick uh, 52, 53, 54, 55? We have no idea. How could we possibly answer a question like this? Well, the idea is, it's, it's vague which means that they don't want us to figure out which four numbers Sally picked. In fact, we probably never could. The idea is, no matter what four numbers she picked, we'll have the same answer here. Dividing by four, taking those remainders, adding up the remainders together. How could that be? Well, if I have four consecutive positive integers, these four numbers, we could say, oh, they probably look something like uh, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, n plus 4. We could, we could say something like that. But we could say something a little bit better. Okay. If you think about any two, no, any two consecutive numbers, you know, 33 and 34. If you think about any, you know, another pair, uh, how about uh, 55, 56, or heck, 58 and 59. Any two consecutive positive numbers, one's always going to be odd, the other one's always going to be even. How does that deal with remainders by 4? It doesn't deal, do anything with remainders by 4 right now. But when it comes to remainders by 2, we'll have a remainder of 0 with the even number and a remainder of 1 with the odd number. Okay. How about if I had three consecutive numbers? You know, something like 1, 2, 3. Or, you know, 6, 7, 8. Or 55, 56, 57. When I have three consecutive numbers, one is always a multiple of three. One always has a remainder of one when I divide by three. And the third always has a remainder of two when we divide by three. It's a nice little property. And so we're always going to get the same remainders, one, two, and zero, but the order might be switched around. And this holds true for any number. If you have six consecutive numbers, one will leave a remainder of zero when you divide by six. One will leave a remainder of one. One will leave a remainder of two. So if I'm talking about any four consecutive numbers, one will have a remainder of zero. One will have a remainder of one. One will have a remainder of 2, and the last one will have a remainder of 3. This is always going to happen with any four consecutive numbers. So what were we told to do in the question? We divide each integer by 4 and add the remainders together. Well, one of those remainders will be 0, one of them will be 1, one of them will be 2, one of them will be 3. So we can just add those all up. So what's the sum of the remainders? 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 6. And we can even prove, the, well, not prove this, we can even do an example of this. Uh, you, you can prove this, I'm not going to for this question, I mean it's a grade 8 question, but we could even take an example. Since Sally's choice of numbers is deliberately vague, any 4 will do. So how about we just take something like 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, the answer should be the same no matter what we choose, otherwise they would have given us more information so we could get the actual answer. This leaves a remainder of 2, a remainder of 3, a remainder of 0, a remainder of 1, just like we predicted. And 2 plus 3 plus 0 plus 1 is 6. So 6 is, in fact, our answer. And that's going to be A. So we bubble in A, and since I've used up the whole page, we're going to flip and get ready for our next question. I will see you guys for that. In the meantime, take care.